Satellite 3. My name, Wagon the Wagoner. On a cliff overlooking Border Town, I stand beside the twin brothers, Braun and Brog and Mustard. I notice Mustard glowering at me in pouting silence for the dozenth time over our last ten days of travel towards the town we now look down upon. Thomas, my intelligent spear friend, once a elfman wizard living beside me on our home planet called El, spoke within my mind. When we fooled Mustard into carrying me on our journey, I managed to read some of his blocked thoughts. I learned that the human Dampir hates you because now you appear identical to Torek. Torek had stolen the affection of his love interest, our Dampir ally Agnes. I nodded, unsurprised. I did not possess Thomas's ability to communicate telepathically. I needed to speak my thoughts aloud to him, so I remained silent. I returned my attention to the lofty cliff overlooking border town that I stood upon. The landscape varied incredibly in all four directions, but our focus was on the fortress built before a dwarfish mountain. Beyond a tunnel carved through the slender mountain rested border town, I had been told. Within the in the walled fortress I spied upon the guards patrolling the barren grounds of the fortress looms a three-story stone building of protruding layers marked with arrow slits. Mustard waved for me and the brothers to follow him down the cliff separating us from the flat plain before border town. We slowly navigate the steeping plain. Then we stride swiftly up to the towering fortress gate set a great distance before the town. The guards standing high above on the fortress's ramparts walked down a stairway. Through the cracks in the wooden walls, I watched the outlines of these warrior men wheel open. Our booted footfalls click impatiently off the stone surface of the inner fortress. We stride past strangely expressionless human warriors wearing silver metal chest plates over their upper bodies. Leather girdles cover their lower bodies to offer freer movement. The bulky mercenaries each at least six feet in height, relatively tall for humans, but by Alephaman standards, they matched the height of children. The human men kept their hands hovering above the hilts of their sheathed short swords with a surprisingly lack of movement in their stiff hands. Their bare arms are thickly corded in wires of tense muscle. Their plumed helms of silver possessed cheek and nasal guards half conceal their mysterious faces. I feel Thomas the steel spear warm in my hand. He hums and trembles. He tells me in a tense tone, Worry not, Vagan, I will be calm in a moment. My instincts are to strike these warriors down. They are not human. They bring me evil. Mustard, the apishly built man with the thin facial hair gleaming deeply from my furrowed brows as fear. He tells me, Ignore the guards. They are the least of your concerns. You shall be more concerned about the time of our fast-approaching boxing match. Before you fight me, the small dampier human brute named Mustard tells me, You must prove you are worthy of my respect. You may attempt to lift the portcullis standing before us. Mutark points his center finger at the monstrous portcullis of massive square iron squares standing before the tunnel carved into a mountain. The key bellows in my face. Beyond that portcullis lies Border Town. The iron portcullis weighs at least 20 stones. That is only 500 pounds. The dampier human explodes forward to grip the iron portcullis with a snarling grunt. Its weight resists his trembling muscles briefly, weakly. In a swift display of power, Mustard yells out in triumph as he thrusts the metal portcullis overhead. Bron and Brog file past Mustard. Then he allows the gate to crash into the earth behind him with a thunderous boom. Impressive. Impressive for a diminutive human man. Obviously, these Dampir humans possessed abnormal strength this arrogant Dampir man failed to realize yet was that my true Alephaman form stood eight feet tall and weigh as much or more so than the portcullis. On the other side of the portcullis, Mustarg stands before a paved street of stone aligned with simplistic cottage homes. The difficult to reach entrance street of Border Town, I imagine. Mustarg yells out to me, Go into Border Town, you must lift the portcullis. Do not fail, little man. No doubt Agnes watches you. Read the description below to make a strength dice roll to open the portcullis. End of chapter 3.